Hello. Uh, my name is Claudio, Claudio Imbrenda. I am one of the co-maintainers for KVM on S390 and KVM unit test on S390. And I'm here to talk about the challenges of uh, a synchronous teardown. Um, so first I will explain what it is and why it's important and, and how we want to solve it. And then I will uh, quickly go over how we solved it. Uh, for both for the reboot case, which is more S390 specific, and for the shutdown case, and uh, some final remarks at the end. So, so what uh, what is it that that we're trying to solve? What is the problem? Problem basically is that when a big process terminates, it takes a lot of time for the memory to be uh, available again. It, it it's um, especially true for protected virtualization on S390 because of the way uh, protective virtualization is done on S390. Uh, so rebooting is also problematic. Um, mm, for example, uh, on AMD, protected guest is encrypted in memory. So when the guest is not needed anymore, the memory is just left there because who cares, it's encrypted. On S390, the memory is not encrypted. Uh, there's access control. So uh, nobody can access uh, the mm, guest memory. Uh, but when the machine, the virtual machine uh, dies, then uh, th there's a long process of having the secure firmware erasing and changing the security property of each page. And this adds a lot of uh, overhead to the cleaning up process. Um, what do we want is uh, to have QMU terminate immediately and leave the teardown maybe to an asynchronous process. Now, here I have a little benchmark done on this laptop, uh, which is a, not a super powerful server, but it's just, just to show uh, that um, this is a problem even for non-secure guests. Uh, I did a test with different sizes, and we can see that it uh, takes approximately 13, uh, it goes at at least uh, approximately 13 uh, gigabytes uh, per second uh, for cleanup time. So if we extrapolate for a big guest, um, 16 terabyte guest would need 20 minutes to shut down, which uh, might be annoying uh, if, you are, if, you, if you have a big machine and you just press on, on libvirt to say, okay, shut down, and then it takes 20 minutes before the machine shuts down and then you can start it again. Um, so that's why you would, you would like to have something where you sh press shut down and it shut down immediately and then you can start it immediately. And something in background will take care of cleaning up. Um, so there are some potential, potential um, issues, and one is actually an issue that we create uh, exactly with this asynchronous teardown. Uh, it's uh, a problem of resource allocation, because if um, the previous VM is still being torn down in the background, it's still taking up memory. And if the, new, the same VM is started again, uh, and it's using up memory quicker than the one that is uh, being cleaned up can clean up, then we end up using maybe too much memory. Which brings to the second item, that's how do we interact with the OAM killer if we do interact at all, if you want to. Um, proper accounting and uh, complexity of implementation. Um, let's have a look at the difference between the reboot and the shutdown case. Because on S390, uh, rebooting uh, a, a secure guest means that the secure guest needs to be turned down completely. Uh, and then a new guest uh, is started in the same memory. So from a KVM point of view, the K it's the same KVM guest. Uh, but the, from, from a mm, firmware point of view, it's, it's a different secure guest that runs in the same memory. So um, in, the shut in the shutdown case, when KVM gets in control, the memory is already gone. Uh, for the reboot case, the memory is already there, so something maybe can be done for it. Um, yeah, so this is at the moment at least an S390 specific problem, uh, I, so I will not waste too much time to, uh, on it, but uh, it might be relevant for other architectures in the future. I don't know if um, other architectures decide to do things in a similar way. So uh, two possible solutions. I, I implemented both of them and they both work, but uh, we'll see the pro and cons for each of them. The first is a very simple. When uh, a, secu a secure guest is destroyed, you just start a kernel thread in the background to clean the memory. And then there is some uh, work needed to, to allow a second guest to run on top of the first one that is still being cleaned up. Uh, because 
maybe the second guest will use some memory in some places that has not been cleaned up yet. So there's some exception handling, the, some situations that normally would not happen that now happen and need to be handled, but that's not the end of the world. Um, so this is very nice because there are no user space changes needed because it just works. And there are no common code changes, which is also nice. It's an S390 problem, so it has an S390 solution. But it uh, brings to improper accounting of CPU time because the cleanup is done in the kernel. And uh, that's not nice that uh, the cleanup for the VM is done in the kernel. This should be accounted to the C group, or if not, if not to QM itself, at least to, to, to the C group that um, uh, QM belongs to. Uh, this is quite important for, for accounting purposes. So next, uh, okay, we try user space. Uh, so we create a new interface. Uh, the QMU destroys the guest uh, with this new interface. The guest is not actually destroyed, it's just set apart. The new, uh, the new guest can be started on top of it already. And then QMU will create a new thread and uh, do the tr teardown in, in background. So basically what we did in the kernel thread before, now we do in this uh, user space. Uh, I mean, it's still done, done in, kernel in, in, in kernel context, of course, but um, in the context of, the, uh, of QMU. So uh, the accounting works correctly because we are uh, working in the QMU's uh, context. So we do have proper accounting of time and uh, we do not, have, still do not need common code changes, but it requires user space changes now. So uh, yeah, obviously the, what s the solution is obvious. Uh, we prefer correctness, uh, so the idea is to have uh, the reboots um, with the user space changes. So mm, some of the patches have been already merged. Some are still pending. Some mailing lists and um, should be merged hopefully soon. Uh, QMU changes are needed. There's small changes, luckily. There's like maybe 20, 30 lines, uh, uh, but uh, I will send them once the kernel changes are in and libvirt does not need any changes. So this is for the reboot case, um, highly S390 specific in this case. Uh, let's see what, what we can do for the shutdown, which is um, a similar problem, but more, more generic. Um, so again, we have a Kernel thread solution, a user thread solution, and two more solutions, deferred mm pot and clone. Let's see what, what this means. And um, yeah, so shutdown, kernel thread, this is quite convoluted. So the idea here is that when we, uh, when the process has been turned down in the arc hook that does the unmap of each uh, PTE, uh, there's a flag that basically indicates if it's a lazy TLB operation or not, which means is this an unmap, like the final unmap when the process is dying, or is just a normal unmap? So we can detect if that's the final unmap, instead of just doing the normal unmap, we do the unmap, but we also uh, do a get page on it. So basically we pin it in, in place, and we put this page on a, in a list of pages that need to be cleaned up later. And uh, so at the end, uh, the, uh, the memory mapping has been cleaned up, except that the pages are still there, They're not, they haven't been freed. And then when later on KVM is turned down, we start a new kernel thread, and in this kernel thread we can one by one clean up all the pages that are in the list. So um, this is entirely ARC specific, so there's no, and there are no user space changes needed. This is entirely done in the kernel, and it does not touch any common code. Uh, on the other hand, there's a little bit of a lot of disadvantages. Um, first of all, kernel thread, improper CPU, uh, CPU time accounting, uh, C groups again. There's a large impact on memory management because uh, if we have a huge cache, then we have a huge amount of pinned memory, which is just there. And uh, uh, this makes interaction, for example, with the OM killer interesting because that's not even mapped to a process. It's just been pinged. And the implementation itself is complex because we, you have to go into the ARC-specific code and do some pretty mm, hacky stuff to <coughs> put all these pages aside and then, yeah. And again, it's ARC-specific. This is also a disadvantage because 
we would like to have a lazy uh, or, or, or a synchronous teardown that uh, maybe works on every architecture because this is, is useful for other architectures as well. So let's try to solve some of these problems and let's go with the user thread. So this is kind of like the reboot case. It's the same as the kernel thread, but instead we have, uh, we force user space to create new process or a thread. Um, actually, we need a process here. Um, the thread we just create uh, issue an ILCTL which will slip, uh, and then everything goes as for the kernel thread uh, case. We pin the pages when and then when KVM uh, is turned down, it will instead instead of starting now a thread, it will just wake up uh, the the, the, tra the the process that was sleeping in that ILCTL, and that ILCTL will then proceed to uh, take the hits and do the cleanup. So it will, it, will be um, it will be done in the context of that cleanup process. So we have proper accounting and um, the, the, this cleanup process will be unkillable until it's, uh, it's done, which is also what we want. So yes, we have proper accounting of CPU time, so we're happy. And it's arc specific, so maybe we're happy. Uh, it still has the same impact on memory management, which is um, maybe not something we want. It, it does need now user space changes, so it's not uh, free lunch. And there is still the same usual complex interaction with the OM killer and the same complex implementation, because this is basically the same implementation as the previous one, except that we are not using a kernel thread, but you're using a user space thread, and again, arc specific. Why not make it arc independent? So next attempt was using uh, mmput async. I discovered that in the kernel there is a function called mmput async, which is the same as mmput, but is done asynchronously. So I thought, this is what I need. So um, the idea is that in the core of the kernel where we do the um, mm exit or exit mm whatever it's called um, when when the mm is uh, unreferenced so with mm put instead of mm put we do mm put async maybe we put an if with some uh, conditions and uh, so that only the processes that are being marked for asynchronous tear down or are turned down asynchronously so um, yeah, and then th there is already infrastructure for it. It just just works. Uh, it requires minimal changes in the kernel. Um, it's actually a simple implementation, as I said. Instead of mm put, it's like if something, then mm put. Otherwise, mm put async. Uh, there are some arc specific hooks needed just to to mark which um, mm's we want to tear down asynchronously later, but it's. Uh, little, so it's a simple implementation. It's quite architecture independent, and there are no user space changes. Uh, user space changes needed, so um, it would just work. But we have two issues again. Now we are doing it in a kernel worker thread, which means that we are not accounting CPU time properly again. So CPU groups again, and some people have been quite loud about doing it correctly. Moreover, this means uh, changing the core of the, the kernel where we do the mm put in the, when the process is turned down. And some of the people who are in charge of memory management were not exactly happy about that, to put it mildly. So um, no, they said, you can do it in user space. Don't do it here. So that's what I did. Um, Clone. So before shutdown, ideally startup, a second cleaner process is cloned using the clone VM flag, which will start a new process sharing this, the address space of the parent, but without, without being a thread. So it's a separate process, it's not a thread. Uh, when the parent terminates, no memory cleanup is performed because the memory is still in use by the child. And so the cleaner process, we just wait until the parent has completely terminated and then just exit. And all the teardown will be on the child now. Um, 
So we have proper accounting of CPU time because it's done in the con I mean, it's the child process that is uh, taking all the heat for the for the cleanup. It's actually a quite simple implementation. It's around 200 lines of code, including comments. It is completely architecture independent, and it is completely in user space. There are no kernel changes needed for this. Disadvantage is that we need user space changes. Well, yeah. And the, the cleanup process is killable, actually. So if you send a uh, sick kill to the uh, cleanup process, the cleanup process will die. And if you kill it before a parent dies, then there's no more asynchronous tear down. That's the, the only uh, real uh, disadvantage, I would say, about this, uh, this solution. So of course, that's the, the one that uh, all the efforts have been concentrating on now. Um, there's still some discussion ongoing, but it seems like the clone solution is the uh, most um, uh, it's, it's the best one. So there are no changes needed for a kernel and libvirt, interestingly. So libvirt will not um, have any issues or complaints. It just works uh, with, with this thing. And um, the patches are out, have been discussed. I don't know when they will be merged, hopefully soon. I don't know. So this is the, the shutdown solution. I will just now go into some more detail about what happens in this cleanup uh, thread, actually process. Um, first of all, it's an opt-in feature, so you need uh, an addition, a new command line option for QMU, so that, that so that for backwards compatibility, this is not done by default. Um, so this new process is created with the clone and clone VM. Uh, and the cleaner process will call uh, PRCTL with the PDAT stick uh, so that when the parent process dies, which is the, in, this case, in this case QMU, the, cl uh, the child will rece receive a SIG hub. Uh, and um, there's just a signal handle for SIG hub. Uh, important, the cleaner process also needs to close all file descriptors because otherwise libvirt is not happy, so if available, close range is used. If not available, then uh, we just open proc self ft and close all the file descriptors um, one by one. Um, close range is better because I've been told that sometimes container people do some strange things and proc is not always mounted all the time. But I guess if the close range is not available, then that's the next best thing. Um, this is because close range was actually introduced in kernel 5 something, and I know there are some distros still, still supported that uh, still have like 4 something, like rel. So, yeah. So, what happens is then the kernel, the cleaner process, just wait for the signal, and uh, only when the parent process has completely terminated, the cleaner process can exit. And complete termination means that uh, the parent, the PID of QMU speed and the parent PID of the cleaner process are not the same anymore. Before cloning, uh, QMU will just write the pin, uh, the, the, the PID uh, somewhere in memory, which is readable, of course, by the cleaner uh, by the cleaner process because they share the memory. And um, when the when QMU's PID is not anymore the parent PID of the um, the cleaner process, then it means that the parent PID is gone, and we can exit. So. This is a generalized solution for a synchronous teardown for any process. Uh, it works for QMU, but it can work for any other thing. It could work for databases, for anything. So maybe, do you think this should be put in a library for everybody's use? This is my question for you. And after asking you this question, I ask if you have any questions, and you do. Yes, so the, uh, if you kill the whole C group, you might, yes, I'm doing it. So yes, the, 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 the remark was, if you kill the, C, the whole C group, then you might end up killing the, uh, the cleanup process before the, um, yes, that's true. But if you are killing the whole C group and then waiting for the whole C group to be gone, then this will not help anyway.
because the cleaner the, the whole point is that the cleanup process will run in the C group of QMU. So if you kill up if you if you, if you want to kill the uh, the whole C group and then you wait until the C group is gone, then yeah. Yes. Um, you mentioned a couple of times that you know you were worried about the C group uh, misattribution. Yes. Um, especially for the shutdown case. Can you explain a bit more what the worry was there? Because I would think, like if I'm a normal VM or any other user space project, I don't really care about cleaning up after myself. The kernel will, in its own time, eventually just do the same. Okay, so the, the question was, why do we care about uh, cleanup accounting for uh, and Cgroup when uh, there is termination? Uh, the point is, when the process is terminating, so the process is basically dead and it's just being cleaned up, uh, this cleanup happens still in the context of that process and is accounted to the C group of the process and you might want to have it accounted properly. Because it's cur that's basically the current uh, behavior. Yes, that's the current okay. behavior. behavior. Yes, exactly. That's the current behavior and uh, uh, that's how it should still be. Yes. The question was, why does the kernel take so long to free the memory? And the answer is that it's a lot of memory. And you need to go page by page and you know, unmap, uh, do a put page. Now the page is free. Maybe you need to zero it out, then put it in the free pool and whatever. It's some amount of processing for each page that you need to do. And uh, there's not, it needs to be done. And if you have a small process, like a few gigabytes is okay, but when you start to go into the terabytes of memory, that's a lot, just, just, th that's just that. And if you go for S390, for example, for protected guests, uh, that's uh, even worse because, as I said, there is lots more cleanup needed for per page that needs, that needs to be done by the firmware and the hardware, and that, uh, that adds quite some overhead so it's even slower. So th that was my, my, my reason for, for doing this, <laughs> obviously. But uh, it's still useful also because, I mean, who wants to wait 20 minutes for uh, a, a VM to terminate, right? Well, for the generic case, okay. So, was I doing the pathological case with 4K pages? Um, to be honest, I don't know. I just started a process on a normal Linux, modern Linux distro, and st allocated 4, 8, 20 gigabytes of RAM, used all of it, and freed, and looked how much time it took on this laptop. Uh, so, <laughs> where I'm going with that is if you're allocating 16 terabytes to a guest and you're backing it with 4K pages, you're just going to have so many other performance issues along the way to get this tear down right? that I'm curious what, what your latency would look like. For yeah, but okay, okay. For example, for example, for yeah, the kernel that we could clean up yeah, that yeah. But, but for example, for protected for for, for protective virtualization S390, you can only have 4K pages at the moment. For example, so yeah, that was that was my main use case to be honest. Uh, although again, if even if it's not 20 minutes, maybe it's 10 minutes. Still, why uh, why why? It's not though. You did a good use case. I, I'd say it's not just the 4K pages. I have a similar issue with x86 uh, page tables. And if you use 4K pages, it's it's hilarious how bad you can make the kernel go. If you bump up to even 2 meg, I mean, it's a factor of 512. Uh, this is x86. You go up to 1 gig, and I forget what the math is there. It's a lot, though. And it's just it's astronomically different, where it goes from, yeah, it's a complete bottleneck on everything to it's a complete non-issue. OK. Um, Thank you. <laughs>